company. This guy, Hugh, I talked to Hugh on my way, man, but he was in Virginia, picked up the phone and, and called the station last night, talked to one and went out and found me and Hugh and I talked today and say, hey, how can we go change the world and change what's going on? It's, it's, it's pretty interesting now starting to see the reach that we have and where people are hearing about us from you know we we mainly when we get on you know facebook here like we are right now doing it on facebook live before we push it you know push the recordings out we only have two three four five people you know listening to us but we're finding out as this goes farther and farther and farther out we've got more people and we're getting more reach and that's what it's going to be all about so man i'm really excited today to have laura in here it's going to be interesting to hear her perspective on, on on what it's like to grow a new business in 2020 and you know go out and ask investors for money and bring your business plan and the challenges that come with that and the successes and where she's actually going to bring this thing to so that's what we're really looking to do here so jonathan we about ready to wrap up all right so we're going to wrap it up we're going to be back in just a minute so we're going to have laura statler on or we're going to start talking about innovation in business and how to make major changes. COVID-19 transformed the way we do business. Now more than ever, fast lead generation and customer retention will determine if a business survives or not. The Now Media Video Business Card is designed to be sent using your smartphone. It's the next generation business card that will open the door for you while keeping social distancing. The Now Media Video Business Card is affordable for anyone from startups to multinational companies and is already being used by hundreds of businesses. Stay open, stay in business. Call us today. Hi, this is Scarlett Horton. You may remember me from the morning news. We know that finding the right team for your painting project can be overwhelming. And if not done right, a painting project can easily go over your budget. At Serta Pro Painters of Central Houston, our professionals will ensure your residential or commercial painting projects run smoothly and are convenient for your schedule, leaving you time for what matters most. Serta Pro of Central Houston has been serving the Houston metro area for more than a decade and has a solid reputation. You can read reviews from our clients and see examples of our work on our social media pages, letters of recommendation, website, and Google reviews. Additionally, at Serta Pro Painters of Central Houston, we warranty our work for two years. We offer free color consultation. We do residential and commercial jobs, interior and exterior, and we are licensed and insured. Not to mention, we are experts in painting cabinets. Serta Pro is the largest painting contractor in the USA. Our crews are not only qualified and skilled painters, they are the best at what they do, and we are always on time. Let our experts at Serta Pro of Central Houston transform your home and business. Our proven process gives you more time to enjoy moments that matter in the spaces you love. Alfredo, Mallory, and John are experienced professionals who will work with you every step of the way to ensure a flawless finish. Call us today at 713-824-5166 and let Serta Pro of Central Houston handle with ease, efficiency, and high professionalism your next residential and commercial painting project because the world needs color. Boom. Hey, this is your business guide, Michael Rager, and I'm back. And uh, I didn't even mention the weather today. So look at out there. It's nice. It's beautiful. It's not raining. It's chilly out here from Houston. Very cold. But here we go. We got our guest, Laura. Laura, how are you today? I'm doing good. How are you? I am great, man. It's awesome. We, we planned this about a month ago when we met. I'm looking mm -hmm. so excited to have you on here and talk a little bit about what's going on in your world. So tell us a little bit about the new things that you're doing and bring into the, uh, the energy world. Okay, I'm not sure where to start on that. It's um, It's been fascinating. So with COVID and all the layoffs and oil and gas, it's been kind of a free-for-all. And mm -hmm. everyone either went home and did their own thing or tried something new, and I tried something new. So I put together a couple business plans that were kind of large scale, and I, I ran for it. So so, so tell us a little bit about the basis, because I know you, this, you got some pipeline influence and stuff like that, right? Well, yep. So there's some virtual pipeline, which is going to be all the trailers to mm -hmm. move hydrogen. Okay. And we also do CNG, argon, helium, all different kinds of things. Um, it's going to help launch the infrastructure for hydrogen to make it launch faster. So you're looking to take hydrogen versus hydrocarbon 
as a fuel source? Is that some of the way you're going or what do you some think? Some of it, yeah. So hydrogen is basically something that is a source that connects all the different energy sectors, whether mm -hmm. it's wind, solar, oil and gas. Everyone can either make it or it's a byproduct and we can help transport it. Okay, so everybody, everybody's got a play in it and everybody's got it. Now what do we do with it? And you're trying to find a way to make it profitable. Right. So they they'll call me and say hey we want to make hydrogen and i'm like great what are you gonna do with it <laughs> and like we have no idea I'm like okay so because there's not a pipeline for it really mm -hmm, mm -hmm. so if we can come in we can pick it up and we can distribute it and that's going to be our main goal so is it uh, i know when we talked a couple of weeks ago are you going to be building new pipelines are you going to buy existing pipelines what's the what's the, the, the plan going to be to move hydrogen from point a to point b it's the trailers is the first core part. Okay. The second part is finding alliances and people that will collaborate. So the midstream partners okay. that I can look at and say, hey, what are you interested in? What can we help you with? Can we blend it? Mm -hmm. Can we help you with some of the you know offtake of whatever you might have? How can we make value for you? And how can we help each other with that value? So what made you decide to say, I'm going to jump into this? It just wasn't COVID. You just weren't sitting here. You obviously saw an opportunity to innovate something. Yeah. How did how'd that come about? You know, it's, uh, it, it's a complicated story. But uh, before I was laid off from oil and gas, I was working on trying to do geothermal wellheads. Okay. And with that being said, when I got laid off, I continued looking into geothermal. It was fascinating. I loved it. I made a business plan for it. Uh, found a great business partner for it, but we couldn't find a way to not be dollar for dollar. So mm -hmm. the other things that interested me a lot with geothermal was the byproducts of lithium and hydrogen and doing a basically a hybrid approach to geothermal with hydrogen. Mm -hmm. So dropping the geothermal away, which not to say that that's a bad thing. I think it's still fascinating, mm -hmm. but we're going to just focus on hydrogen. And so after watching some of the international structures change, um, like in Germany, they from all geothermal straight to hydrogen. Mm -hmm. And so following that movement, I started working with some investors and bringing this to light and saying, hey, this is where we could start. This is where it could end. This is large scale. It's going to be for the next, you know, however many years mm -hmm. and, um, and ongoing. And we loved it. And so I just took the jump and decided that, you know what, after talking to these investors, they were fascinated by it and I, as much as I was fascinated by it. And I just kept driving into it and it's been, um, it's, I've been very blessed with who I've ran into. Well, that's nice. That's awesome. You know, I've dealt with investors in the past and we were talking about this a little bit before. What, what's it like looking to try to find investors for business owners out there like <laughs> you that, that they've never, like, I've got this great idea, but I know I can't do it by myself. What's it like to go out there and try to find investors? It's scary. It's really uh -huh. scary. When I came up with the idea and sitting by myself at the time, you know, I'm a single mom with two, two boys and... I'm thinking, I don't even know where to start. Right. I, don't, I have never ran a business. I, I don't know how, to, do I go and present? Do I go make a call and walk in like an interview? And what is it? Mm -hmm. But honestly, I just threw myself out there and got on LinkedIn, really talked to people about, hey, you know, what are you guys doing right now? What's the best route here? If I wanted to start something, who would I talk to? Mm -hmm. And just put myself out there and talk to people and they led me to the right people. And I found a business partner up in, uh, that I used to work with up in Pennsylvania. Mm -hmm. And he took this to his investor and who loved it. And we hit all the bullet points for the initiative. And so we're working on, on that contract. And if that goes through, it's going to be a lot of fun. That's nice. So, so where are you guys going to be situated first? Are you guys starting out of Houston? Are you starting where? And how do you see this thing exploding? So uh, we always looked at Texas as being the hub spot. Right. And during this time of you know promoting all of this to the investor, we were still missing a missing link, and that was Hydroco. Okay. So we grabbed Hydroco, great team. They're out of Mississippi, so they've been there for about two years. Okay. They'll be moving to Houston, Okay. and Houston will be our home. Nice. So we'll build out from here and about six other locations that I can't go into. Yeah, too much detail. yeah, we know there's some some things you can't talk about. Don't worry, we're gonna we're gonna make you dig into some of the other parts about <laughs> <laughs> running the country. How many how many minutes we got in this segment, Jonathan? He's not paying any attention to me. Yeah, I know. How, how many how many minutes we got in this segment? The four still. Okay, okay, we we got that. So so coming in and starting the company. All right. So here you are, it's Laura. She's got business partner. No, no, no. What was the first thing that you said, okay, I've got to build this first before I can start moving? 
You know, it wasn't really a, um, it was more just the drive. I wanted to get it done. And I, I took, you know, COVID's been the greatest opportunity for me. Mm-hmm. I've met more people and gotten further in six months than I probably would have in five years. Mm-hmm. And I give credit to LinkedIn for that. I give credit to people being able to open up and um, people being bored and mm-hmm. saying, hey, you want to talk? Okay. <laughs> <laughs> and, um, but it's, uh, I just, I took the opportunity. I just, I decided that I needed to push now. And I'm also, like I said, a single mom. I've got to mm-hmm. put food on the table. Right. And um, it's, you know, watching every move I make. That was the hardest part, you know, when I, when I started. So here it is. We went from, we were making six figures, mm-hmm. nice six figures to, okay, now there's no money coming. Yeah. <laughs> it's like, but it's we're working <laughs> three times as hard. Yeah, if not harder, yeah. And That's, it's like, what the hell? How does this happen? And, and and where do we go? And what happens? And you know, kind of move through there. That's that's what I always found was was the hardest part of starting uh, starting a business. Oh, yeah. You know, I read. I was like reading constantly. I, I ended up picking up obviously the startup bible. Uh, you know, things about this thick and yeah. serving. Okay, okay, I got to do this. I got to do this in my business plan. I got to do this. Where did what gave you the what was the hardest thing to start doing, you know, when it came to putting a business plan together? All of it. All of it. <laughs> I mean, when, when someone asked me, so what's, what are you going to name your business? I was like, oh, uh, I don't I don't know. <laughs> you know, it's all of it was. It, it's a it's a risk. Um, COVID made the risk worth taking because there was no jobs to be had anyway. Right. right. Um, but it, it's just when I got laid off, it, it just it gave me more energy than I had mm-hmm. because it, it's a challenge. I like challenges. It's not yeah. a problem. It's a challenge. But you're right. The biggest obstacle is you're not getting paid. Yeah. And I'm giving, I've am i been given all these opportunities. And I still have you know different investors saying, hey, I want to do this with you. I want to do this for you. I want to do this for right. you. And I have to choose. And that's not a bad spot to be in. But it is stressful because it's how fast can we move? Is this the right team? Is it going to be the right culture? Where is this going to take me globally, mm-hmm. and how do we proceed? Yeah, that that was it. When we were looking to take money, is you know how do we? Okay, here's what we put together as our core values, and here's what we wanted to do. Right. And he, okay, how do you fit? Yeah. You know, mm-hmm. it was funny. We did an interview with a guy that was in the medical device industry because that is startup we had at the time. We we wrote organizational processes and procedures made it very we used to call it corporate knowledge capture and transfer so we figure out how the smart guys worked in the company and then kind of put it on paper or put it into technology so people 20 years from now could figure out how you thought and how you solve problems and we brought a guy in and he was in the medical industry and he wanted to interview somebody that had used our product and he brought it we brought in a friend of mine and she had taken this this startup this this medical facility that was just losing money and took it to like eight million dollars in four years yeah and then all he did was rip on her Ooh. it's like and i'm on the i'm texting the guy that brought her i said dude this guy is not it oh, this boy. guy is <laughs> no i don't care how much money he's going yeah no i mean no, i don't want to have him anywhere near us billions and you know millions and if, if you're not the right person well, let's go we're gonna we're gonna be going we got we got about 30 seconds left in this segment um Usually, I tell people how to ask them how to get a hold of you, but I, you know, right now it's, it's LinkedIn, right? LinkedIn. You know, LinkedIn is the yeah. place to find Laura, and we're going to get Jonathan. He'll throw that up on the screen here in a minute. But um, we're going to come back, Laura. And what I want to do is when we come back from this little commercial break, we're going to go to. I want to talk about. We talked a lot about leadership uh, when we met, and I want I want to get your takes on how it, your your trip has gone from leadership in corporate America. To now, how you see yourself leading a new company? Okay. And, and hearing from that, and hearing your uh, your thoughts on leadership, sound good? Okay, sounds good. All right, Jonathan, it's all over to you now. COVID nineteen transformed the way we do business. Now more than ever, fast lead generation and customer retention will determine if a business survives or not. The Now Media Video Business Card is designed to be sent using your smartphone. It's the next generation business card that will open the door for you while keeping social distancing. The Now Media Video Business Card is affordable for anyone from startups to multinational companies and is already being used by hundreds of businesses. Stay open, stay in business. Call us today. Hi. This is Alberto Tudela. The Houston metro area has experienced a substantial increase 
of wind and hail damage, flooding, and other perils in the last five years. Now more than ever, it is critical and essential to ensure your company, your property, as well as your family have the right insurance coverage. Tudela Insurance Solutions offers a wide variety of insurance for home, auto, property, as well as life insurance. My goal is to find a tailored option that guarantees the right coverage at the right price. Specific to your needs, present and future, so you protect what matters the most. Call me today at 713-714-4475 and allow our team at Tudela Insurance Solutions to make sure you're protected. Accidents never happen when we expect them. Now is the time to ensure you have peace of mind. to experience the ease and convenience of the latest and most advanced home security system? Are you going away on vacation and want to have peace of mind while you're not at your home or at your office? According to the FBI, a robbery occurs every 13 seconds and homes and businesses without a security system are 300% more likely to be burglarized. Hawk Security provides security solutions to residential and small businesses in the state of Texas and from California to Georgia, building a custom tailored security setup that matches your needs. Whether it is home security, fire and carbon monoxide detection, flood detection, connected senior care, managed video surveillance solutions, alarm monitoring and life safety. In addition to fire and carbon monoxide detection, Hawk Security has a smart home and business integration, expanding security services to a lifestyle solution, keeping customers connected to their home and businesses from anywhere in the world, from their tablet or mobile device. So you can have peace of mind even if you're not at home or in your office. Reduce your energy cost, scheduling automatic changes in thermostats or lighting. And because we rely on our heroes every single day, Hawk Security offers security services discounts to military personnel, veterans, first responders, educators, and hospital personnel. Our mission is to keep our clients safe, treat them like family, and provide them with a user-friendly security system with personalized customer service 24 hours a day, 7 days a week. For integrity, honesty, passion, and excellent customer service, take a strong step today toward getting protected and call Rosanna Torres at 832-863-8574 because every home and business is unique and every security system should be unique too. Hey, it's your business guide, Michael Rager, and I'm back with Laura Statler. Laura, all right, we were talking there in the break. Those of you that are watching us on Facebook, you can hear some of that stuff in the background. Uh, the rest of you, you're not privy to it. So. <laughs> so let's talk about leadership. That's something we talked about a lot when we met a few weeks ago. Mm -hmm. So this leadership was pretty, uh, pretty strong in your background. And how has it gone from being a leader while working for a big company you know, so you're you're a, you're a small piece in a giant company. To now, you're going to be pushing yourself into a place where you've got to lead and cast a vision for people to actually follow you. It's um, it's a lot, <laughs> and I don't view myself as someone for them to just you know follow or anything. It's I need to find people that I see as leaders that I can surround myself with and mm -hmm. get that experience. But going from these other companies, which I was working for small companies, and I was a stay-at-home mom for. Mm -hmm. A long time and so this was a huge job for me mm -hmm. and i try not to focus too much on the, uh, th that side of it, but right. on the same note i look at it and go you know what? i've got a i've got a global vision i see the picture i know it can happen and i get excited meeting the people that also can see the picture even if they see some of it but they're you know passionate about it i love that they can be on my team i've got one gentleman on my team named jason who he gets so excited and energized and he knows everything about these trailers right and it's amazing and i'm just like you know just run with it go you're, yeah. you're gonna do great and that's my goal as as a leader in today's 
time. It's how can I drive efficiency, effectiveness, and how can I get a good team culture where we're comfortable with each other so mm-hmm. we can really grow this thing efficiently and as we scale, we can scale it effectively. Yeah, it's it's when we first started talking, we, you know, I, I let you know I, I work with John Maxwell and I got to go to John's house one day and I got my, one of my favorite pictures is I have a picture of me and John and his mug shot when he got arrested for taking a oh, uh, pistol through. Through, uh, through security in West Palm Beach Airport. That was, yeah. that, that was my, that's my, my John Maxwell picture in my house. He's great. So he is. He's a great guy. But as, as you said, you know, your, your job as leader now is to cast a vision and bring mm-hmm. people in the follow. I know when he talked about when he was for, forming Equip, you know, when he formed Equip, he said, look, the vision is we're going to train a million leaders worldwide. Mm-hmm. He goes, that was the hardest part. He said, setting that vision and figuring out what you want to do was really the hardest part. So when you start looking at saying you're going to build a global company, you're seeing way bigger than even 99% of other business owners because they're not seeing that far. They can't see past the end of their street. I noticed that. <laughs> <laughs> Quite literally these days. <laughs> you, you know, when we were talking about the new company, we said, you know, I, I showed you our vision is to connect 100,000 people in 10 years. Yeah. And people are like, oh my God, that's, you know, 10,000 people a year. And it's like, yeah. Right. But they don't see it. So when you go and you start talking to people and you start seeing that there's somebody that's potentially to, to come into your organization, what do you start thinking about when thinking that, yeah, yeah this may be a good person? You know, I, I think how excited you know i get excited that they might have an opportunity with me right Mm -hmm. but more importantly i look at everyone as a potential ally Mm -hmm. someone to collaborate with Mm -hmm. and the more people i can find to collaborate with you know i'm not scared to talk to anybody Mm -hmm. and when i meet some of these executives of these large firms in oil and gas especially who are saying well this is what we've been doing for so long and i'm thinking yeah but you're you're so experienced and have so much success that we could build on and with Mm -hmm. how can i just work with you And I I lead that way. And eventually it might be the time where I can say, be on my team. Mm -hmm. But right now it's how do we work together? How do we come to the same table without being cutthroat? And we can build an alliance that really makes this infrastructure build out quickly but efficiently and not be like what oil and gas did so long ago Mm -hmm. with being cutthroat and having walls between us. How do we tear down the walls? And that's what I'm aiming for. Well, that's why we were talking about the ESG stuff. You know, that that's my whole vision is to bring people from different companies and different industries together to talk about ways that we uh, we change the environmental footprint that corporations yeah. bring, the social interactions on how they work and, you know, how, how, how their governance is in the company and how, how things change. Because I think so many, so often big business gets pushed by its attorneys and it gets pushed by its consultants and it doesn't bring its smart people just and say, sit down and talk. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. And, and, and that's what it's all about. And that's where I kind of built, you know, it's really funny when I built um, teach your business to fish. You got to meet my son Cameron. We we're here, and I really built it for two reasons. One is I wanted somebody else to pay for my fishing trips, and two is I wanted him to go and meet smart, brilliant people like you and other leaders, and not be afraid of them growing up. Because when I grew up, you know, my dad was a cop, and I got to meet judges and lawyers, and so uh, you know, here I am, this 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 kid hanging out with a cop, and then I got all these guys that are wearing you know five hundred dollar Armani suits <laughs> when I go to this place, and I'm like, you know, in awe. And you know, it's funny when you talked about going to some of these pipeline. God, it was a Great Lakes gas pipeline, and I worked for it was, one of the some of the executives from Great Lakes gas came out, okay. and they wanted to see it be done. So I was the lead environmental guy, and we're walking around and. We're showing them silt fence. And we're walking around. There's silt fence going up around this construction site. And there's like, the guy's looking at it and he goes, well, okay, but silt fence, the water goes through it and it's still dirty. It's like, it's yeah. like well, it doesn't really work like that. And here's what happens. Da, da, da. So it took the guy around for about two hours. It was a gray day like it was here yesterday. Mm-hmm. So after about two hours, I said, come on, let's go to lunch. So we go to lunch, we go have a few beers. And so here I'm with, you know, C, C-level executive of the company. Yeah. About... 10, oh, about 18 months later, I ended up getting interviewed by Great Lakes. And I was out in Oregon, and they were looking at a new envir- head of environmental, and they were talking to me. I was only like 29 at the time. Wow. So I was like, there's no way they're going to hire me. And so they, they bring me up to this floor, and I go through these elevators, and it's nothing but marble. I wow. mean, the assistant is sitting at a marble desk, and there's these two giant mahogany doors. And I go walking in, and the guy's like turned back to me. And I'm like, holy 
holy shit, who is this dude? Yeah. Turns around and he goes, Mike! <laughs> it was the same guy that we were out drinking beers. And I'm yeah. like, oh, okay, this made this way easier. Yeah. And But I ended up not getting the job. I, I got, it was really weird. I got the job, but they had offered somebody else first and they turned it down. They offered to me, I took it, and I started to pack up and leave. And I already gave up my apartment and the other person changed their mind. Wow. And they rescinded it for me and gave it to that person. Wow. It was, oh, man, that sucks. Yeah. But you're going up into those offices. Those, I mean, you've been in some of those big oh, shiny yeah. offices no. now, and it's different, isn't it? Oil and gas is it's a new extreme for sure. I grew up around health insurance my whole life, and you know, I, I saw some very nice areas and grew mm-hmm. up in uh, beautiful areas. But so nothing really surprises me with those. And I look at that, and I look at people, and all I want to know is what can I learn from them well, and look past all of that but oil and gas is something that is definitely you go into some of these offices and you're like holy cow did you really need all of this yeah I remember the first one I went I had to go to one in Kansas City and you know here's where I think only this is where I think lawyers get into t- too much stuff um, but I had to wear a suit to go into this thing and I had to wear steel toes mm-hmm. um, so here I, I'm wearing my thousand dollar suit and I got steel toe boots on yeah and it's like well why Be- well because everybody's got to wear steel toes here and I'm like but why yeah but I love my steel toe boots. That was one thing that I, I still miss it. I still have them and I still use them in my yard. But I loved going out to the rigs and then going to the offices. Sometimes I'd get so excited going into the office, I'd still have my steel toed boots on. They, mm-hmm. You know, I'd see all the looks going, really? <laughs> and I'm like, I'm sorry, I forgot. I forgot. Mm-hmm. So so let's, let's go on the leadership thing. How did you get involved in leadership? Because we talked about uh, you did a lot of stuff for, for John and some, some stuff so, in your, your career. So Yeah, I grew up in a um, very leadership-centric household of you know siblings that were always involved. My, my father's a beautiful leader, so is my mom. Um, John Maxwell was in all of my education pretty much at TCU and mm-hmm. even at Sam Houston. Um, then I started working for LeaderCast, which is a leadership you know, consulting firm pretty much. We're bringing in people to watch these seminars. And it was, it was great. It was while I was moving from Pittsburgh to, to Texas, and I got to sit there and study all this leadership. And that helped kind of refresh my mind after 10 years of being a stay-at-home mom. And mm-hmm. it was like, okay, you know, this is, this is just a mindset. We got this. Mm-hmm. It's, it's funny. As I've been pushing a lot of, uh, I don't know if you follow Brendan Burchard at all, but um, I, I've been pushing to the people that I coach. Uh, Brendan's um, a motivation manifesto. And it is it is just a total change in mindset really? on how you've got to start looking at yourself to really help others. Right. And, and that's what it's about. And it's 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 very interesting about throwing out some of the stuff that's clogged in our head. Yes, absolutely. And, and there is so much junk in our heads. Oh, yeah. I mean, absolutely. <laughs> and trying to get yourself clear mindset and have yourself you know some new boundaries and really you know take time to write some things out and take time to and say okay what what can I do that's also you know I learned this actually from Linda Galindo, and she's. She, fantastic woman uh, consultant and she teaches accountability Mm -hmm. and I was actually her intern for some time and but it was how are you accountable to yourself and to your team Mm -hmm. and if you can go from there and show that accountability and respect you can take your team anywhere oh yeah it is it's it's they 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 all got to follow us one of the trainings that I do when I go in the companies and I buy a picture of Hitler and Gandhi and I I ask him which one's the better leader because if you follow John's definition yeah. of leadership is influence, nothing more, nothing less. Right. Both very influential people. Mm-hmm. One just had a really shitty message. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you know, but if you, if you follow it, people people got around. And, and, and a lot of times it, organizations don't realize that the, the person that they think is leading is not really leading. Right. And, you know, it, it's we've seen it in our country. We, we we we've, we've had a lot of that that's that's gone on and, and and we need to we need to get there and you know I remember uh, God I think it was a 2019 right before I'm, I'm sorry 2015 right before the 2016 election uh, Maxwell was talking about how he was approached to to run for president during right. that campaign and it was very interesting on his decision making because if those of you that know who John is he's former pastor and he said he, he goes. He made this, it was a very impactful statement to me. He goes, there's a lot of people, if I got elected president, that would be mad at me because 
I won't be ruling the country, running the country, not ruling the country, <laughs> running the country as the United Christian States of America. It would have to be the United States of America because Christianity has just as much influence as any other religion in yeah. this place. So th- those are really things that we need to be looking at and, and, and how we step up and make some changes. So Jonathan tells me I need to shut up so we can go. And uh, he's being very nice back there because my son's back there. And he's got his mask on and I can't read his lips this time. So uh, it's all good. So we're going to go to another break. We're going to be back with Laura. We're going to talk a little bit about the fun stuff of owning a business after this. So we'll be right back. COVID-19 transformed the way we do business. Now more than ever, fast lead generation and customer retention will determine if a business survives or not. The Now Media Video Business Card is designed to be sent using your smartphone. It's the next generation business card that will open the door for you while keeping social distancing. The Now Media Video Business Card is affordable for anyone from startups to multinational companies and is already being used by hundreds of businesses. Stay open, stay in business. Call us today. Hi, this is Alberto Tudela. The Houston metro area has experienced a substantial increase of wind and hail damage, flooding, and other perils in the last five years. Now more than ever, it is critical and essential to ensure your company, your property, as well as your family have the right insurance coverage. Tudela Insurance Solutions offers a wide variety of insurance for home, auto, property, as well as life insurance. My goal is to find a tailored option that guarantees the right coverage at the right price. Specific to your needs, present and future, so you protect what matters the most. Call me today at 713-714-4475 and allow our team at Tudela Insurance Solutions to make sure you're protected. Accidents never happen when we expect them. Now is the time to ensure you have peace of mind. Hi, this is Scarlett Horton. You may remember me from the morning news. We know that finding the right team for your painting project can be overwhelming. And if not done right, a painting project can easily go over your budget. At Serta Pro Painters of Central Houston, our professionals will ensure your residential or commercial painting projects run smoothly and are convenient for your schedule, leaving you time for what matters most. Serta Pro of Central Houston has been serving the Houston metro area for more than a decade and has a solid reputation. You can read reviews from our clients and see examples of our work on our social media pages, letters of recommendation, website, and Google reviews. Additionally, at Serta Pro Painters of Central Houston, we warranty our work for two years. We offer free color consultation. We do residential and commercial jobs, interior and exterior, and we are licensed and insured. Not to mention, we are experts in painting cabinets. Serta Pro is the largest painting contractor in the USA. Our crews are not only qualified and skilled painters, they are the best at what they do, and we are always on time. Let our experts at Serta Pro of Central Houston transform your home and business. Our proven process gives you more time to enjoy moments that matter in the spaces you love. Alfredo, Mallory, and John are experienced professionals who will work with you every step of the way to ensure a flawless finish. Call us today at 713-824-5166 and let Serta Pro of Central Houston handle with ease, efficiency, and high professionalism your next residential and commercial painting project. Because the world needs color. All right, it's your business guide, Michael Rager, and we're back with Laura Stadler. Those of you that aren't watching us live on Facebook, you're not hearing the behind the scenes. Yeah, see, my, my son gave Laura a kiss, one like this. Uh, he came out, he's, uh, he's, he's making sure dad stays fat. You know, he's fattening me up for Christmas and all that stuff. That, that, that It's good. You said you're a, sing- you're, you're, you're a mom. Yeah, boys, girls, what do you got? Two boys. Two boys, how old? Ten and six. Ten and six. Oh, so they're, they're, they're his age and uh, doing that fun stuff. They're, they keep you busy. They, they do do that. So let's talk a little bit about the, the major vision of this company. Okay. What, what, you, you said globally. What's, what's, the, what's the five-year 
I mean, I could sit here and talk for days about it, but the main thing is right now we build out the backbone for hydrogen mm -hmm. and we make it easier for people to connect the dots from mm -hmm. coast to coast. Uh, the other part is storage. Mm -hmm. um, how do we store hydrogen? What's the other part of hydrogen that makes it economic? CO2 is mm -hmm. another huge part of this. Um, and working with large companies, industrial clusters, and getting them all to buy into it and work together on those things and storage and filtration systems. Um, and it's working with the different energy sectors to make sure that they can make hydrogen transport it, um, seeing how we can be beneficial to them, whether it be by zones or be by technology. And um, one of my exciting projects is on the offshore division, and that's looking at you know existing infrastructure and seeing how we can retrofit it. But our main goal is to keep utilizing oil and gas experience mm -hmm. and blend it into this new transition with hydrogen. And it's um, we looking at all these different structures that we can use and globally that we can use and creating mm -hmm. these virtual highways and virtual pipelines, um, not just for the roads, but for the shipping industry and for exports. So with CO2, how's that going to come in? Are you guys looking to do carbon capture and transfer or... There's what, a lot with that side. It's there's a, a ton of stuff in that side. That's um, it's a lot of fun to see what people are doing and what some of the capabilities are. The main thing is, can we capture it? Mm -hmm. Yes, we're going to capture it. Uh, what do we do with it then? Mm -hmm. And it's, is there an end use? There are end uses. Mm -hmm. um, I don't want to just store it. Right. I think that that's going to be something that's going to be an issue to a lot of people later on down the road. Right. But if we can create it into a filtration system in okay. a way, uh, I can't go into too much detail about it right now, mm -hmm. but it's going to be um, very exciting for a lot of companies that want to come in at the wellhead. That's that's kind of cool because I, I remember, God, now go back to the 90s, you know, we were looking at doing some stuff with uh, cleanup, spill cleanups and stuff like that. And we were looking at ways of, we we're using some trees that could actually suck this up and utilize it and then use the trees for carbon capture mm -hmm. as well and it was very interesting because it, it's, it's, it's those of you that don't realize this when you get into a big oil and gas type project the permitting side there's all this stuff on the back end that, that you know people have no idea what oh. happens these things take four five six years to permit mm -hmm. on the conservative side right you know and uh, that's that's where my special I use a first expert when I was there so I, I was on the construction side I used to do a lot on the the plan procedures Poor thing. I, <laughs> I, it was it's really of... funny it's it was so easy for me yeah. I didn't have to think that's part of the reason why I left is it was so easy and I didn't have to think anymore yeah and I got sick of fighting yeah I I, I, I got to the point when I when I first got in the industry I fought with the construction with the construction because they didn't want to do anything right. to be compliant. Mm -hmm. And then at the end, it was fighting with the feds because we were doing things right, right. but they wouldn't accept what, they were, what we were doing. Yeah. And it was like, I'm just sick of this. Right. And, 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 and people just don't want to, I mean, I walked away from a $30,000 a month job. I just one day just gave them the double birds and said, I'm done. There's some things in life that deserve that. <laughs> You know, <laughs> can't do this anymore. No. Yeah, I couldn't get up out of because it's it's like just listening to you talk. Whenever you talk about your company, I know when you pop out of bed in the morning, you're like, Woo let's, I am. Let's, 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 <laughs> My let's kids go. are like, Mom, I don't want to hear about hydrogen anymore. <laughs> yeah, I could care less about hydrogen, Mom. Right. But you know, with me, it's it's at the time I didn't even want to go get out of bed. You right. know, that was the thing, and you know, kind of going from there. You coming in here to to, to you know, Jonathan sneaking in? He's doing some stuff. Adjusting cameras. Oh, okay. So, I mean, th those are the things that you see. So, when you when you're building this, and you have your kids involved, you know, mine. Like we were telling you, mine's got his own little company. He was my. I told you, he was my very first guest on this. Yeah. On this. Uh, on this show. What do you and your kids do for fun? I mean, where's the uh, where's where's the mom and the boys? What do you guys oh, all do gosh. when you go rock? Uh, with my kids, it's Nerf Wars, and I even keep a Nerf gun on my desk so that when I'm in a Zoom call and they come in to prank me, I can shoot them out. Shoot them out. <laughs> shoot them before they get there. But it's it's uh, and pulling pranks on each other. But it you know I've got one son that loves sports, and we're constantly going to baseball games or hockey, whatever it might mm -hmm. be. Um, another one that you know my little one, he's you know he loves to build things. He likes to do Legos. He likes mm -hmm. to um, go outside and ride in his little truck. But you know it's. I'm I'm a stay-at-home mom with them, and it's it's like a 
it's a free for all with them. Mm -hmm. And I just try to enjoy the moment with them. Is this going to change? That's, that's a sore subject. (laughs) But I I mean, because that's, you know, I try to, I've tried to use this time to really bring them into what I'm doing Mm -hmm. and see, you know, kind of push their imagination. I showed them an offshore platform and I said, Hey, what what would you do with this? Mm -hmm. And, you know, just imagine this is, this is huge. You know, here's a video of what it looks like. And, you know, my one son was like, we had drones come to this and it was just the recharging station and then it, it could deliver ice cream <laughs> I'm like, oh. there you go. I'm like i like the first part that was really and i do like the second part that's good that's good <laughs> and so i really try to like put your imagination aside i give them blank notebooks all the time like draw something or here's mm-hmm. what i'm working on draw something mm-hmm. figure something out with it yeah i do it with him uh, so when we were creating you know the website for the esg leaders hey come here look at this give me your perception you know listen to them they they, they 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 actually they see things different than we do they do and it's the important thing we go back to we were talking last segment about leadership you, you leadership comes when you see you, you let people bring their perspective to the table yes and it's it's amazing when you bring young people's perspective to the table they see so many possibilities they do and it, it, and it's amazing you know it and uh, and going from there so how do you how do you see bringing this in with the kids? I mean, they're gonna they're gonna watch mom grow this thing and mom become this 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 global phenomenon of the the, the hydrogen queen. <laughs> and uh, how, how, do, how does that how does that work? Um, it's it's a little scary, and I, especially once COVID is done and thinking of the travel involved mm-hmm. with it. You know, they get to and they watched how I started off with just a couple notebooks and trying to figure it out and different people and you know every time my son comes home and you know, one of his complaints was mom every time I go into your office you're you're on the phone with all these men that I can't even understand half of them <laughs> because I'm talking to people from around the, around world, the world on Zoom <laughs> and it's been nice I've been able to open up to some of them to say you know here's my son you know could you say hi and mm-hmm. uh, they're getting to you know witness all these different people from around the world that are leaders and um tell them different things that they might move their camera for a second to show them something different and then after the call is over and i would go and look at the map and say this is where they were this is what's there this Mm -hmm. is what they're dealing with what do you think about it and i hope i can bring them into this as much as possible but they're at ages that it's going to be interesting oh yeah no it's it's mine he's he's my he's in business he likes business uh he likes the math side of it oh and he likes the money side he yeah like, he likes when he, gets, he likes when he gets paid <laughs> and then yeah. i go yeah those are the best days so uh when you go this so is your goal with this is yours to, is it to grow it and sell it is it to grow it and keep growing it or is it my goal is you know everyone tells me what's your exit strategy mm-hmm. and you know there's a way look at an exit strategy is you know sell it and move on i i don't look at it that way i look at it as something that i hope i can always have a hand in Mm -hmm. um inspire the next team to really jump in and keep pushing it and keep Mm -hmm. pushing it so that when i can end my career one day i can look back and see their success right um, and see the things that have bridged off of it and just continue building these bridges off of you know just the beginning this is the launch point yeah it's 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 interesting that's one of the first questions i always ask business owners when they come and I, what's the end game? Yeah. You know, it's. I, I just like it because if, at least if I know the end game, I know the target that I'm shooting for. Right. It's that that target can always change, mm-hmm. and and thus tactics and strategies change with it. But we, we we do have to have some idea where in the heck we're going. Right. In a short term, mm-hmm. um, one of the things I love to do is. Um, one of my friends, a guy named Cameron Harold, uh, he used to be COO of One Eight Hundred Got Junk. Okay. Before it became a three, you know, helped build it to a three hundred million dollar company. And um, one of his books is called Double Double. And it, um, at the time, he called it building a painted picture. So it was painting the picture of your life three years from today. You jump, and here's the exercise he gave, and I give it to my clients: is you get in a time time machine, you jump out three years from today. What do you see in your life? Oh gosh! Oh God, what is it? What is your? What does your office look like? How many team members do you have? Where do you? Have? And it's. I, I tell people it's like you, you. You can't do it in your office when you do that exercise. You just need to get that yellow pad. That's my thing. I, I take my yellow pad and a cigar and a glass of whiskey, and I go sit somewhere and just start writing. Yeah. And it's very interesting because I did this myself 
at the beginning of last year and I started looking at it. I just went back and reviewed it and I started seeing how many things have come, yeah. how, how we're moving towards those things already. And I sh actually, a lot of people, I share that painted picture because I've actually had somebody rewrite it for me and we put it into a nice PDF and all that stuff. And so I could say, oh, hey, Laura, here's where I'm going. Yeah. And what you see is when you, the more you share that, the more people show up, you get it. Yeah. And it, it, it's, it's very, very amazing. So what do we got, Jonathan? Like three minutes left? He's not paying any attention to me again. Hey, Jonathan. What, three minutes? Uh, uh, five. Five. Okay, okay. So this last five minutes, I want you to come up with, you're going to be talking to your sons. 10, 15 years from now. Oh, boy. I know. I know. <laughs> I know. Right, tough questions. What do you want them to see that mom's done? And uh, what do you want to, what do you want them to see that they can continue mom's legacy? You know, just doesn't have to be in the in the industry. But what, what what do you want them to see? I want them to see that you know they can do anything. That what they have in their mind is not just an imagination, and that there's still a way to look at the world that doesn't have problems but challenges to conquer and to mm -hmm. use them as obstacles. And to be excited about those challenges and that work doesn't have to be just a job. Mm -hmm. That you can pour into it and you can bring your family into it and have that balance. It, there might be some hard times, but you just keep driving. And they've been through a lot in their life mm -hmm. as well as myself. And I, I hope they can see that they watch their mom conquer those obstacles and that they have a mom that it's taught them how to how to succeed whether that means making a lot of money or not mm -hmm. well money is always fun it makes yeah. it it makes it trust me it's way more fun making six figures and not. Sure. <laughs> it's it's the whole thing right i want them you know it's it's the communication for them to understand that you know the world is communication and if you can communicate you can do anything mm -hmm. and it's watching how you can talk to people and how you can have those relationships in business and in at home mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and make those bridges for people how do you help people yeah. and how can you have a humanitarian side to everything i want you know we've got a huge human trafficking initiative right and that's something that i i hope that they see that you can have a balance between building a business and still helping the world mm -hmm. yeah i've got one of my clients she's uh she's a pretty successful realist realtor here in houston and she does a lot philanthropically with sex trafficking and stuff like that and there's a a, a gentleman tony roberts that I, I actually did a mastermind group with God, man, nine years ago and mm -hmm. we're at the Houston club and Tony's in this and I had no idea who Tony was. I thought, you know, I know he was an attorney in the air force. Well, I didn't know he was the assistant DA. Uh. <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, so we're sitting there going through 21 laws of leadership. And one of the questions was, is, you know, if you were to go speak to your boss, what's the next thing? And he goes, I don't know. I haven't been able to sit down with Barack. <laughs> and I went, Wait oh. a minute. <laughs> Hold you, on. That's your boss. He goes, yeah. He goes, I'm like, oh. yeah. And uh, this guy, he was one of the top, um, one of the top generals that really used the military to crack down on sex trafficking. Wow. That was that was one of his passions that's was awesome. eliminating that in the world. And uh, you know, so it's it's really interesting to see that you, you just don't know about people when you get to you, you get to meet them. Yeah. So we're gonna give you a, you know one last to inspire some some starting a company so give it give us you know we're, we're closing out here what's, what's something you're supposed to be thinking to start a company don't think it. about it anymore just do it and make the jump and start talking to people and it right now is the best time that you can figure things out mm -hmm. and the world is leveled everybody's looking for how do we make jobs how do we make money how do we make a change how do we pivot who do we talk to and who has an open door mm -hmm. and whether they have experience or no experience it's, it's doesn't matter anymore and it's you know just get excited and stop looking mm -hmm. through the lenses of the media and you know if you shut off google and all these things just go for it because yeah. the world is the most colorful it's been in years yeah there's opportunity out there that, that people don't even realize right now no, it's, it's it's one of the things to the time we have a hardship hardship means opportunity yeah and, it is. and that's what it's all about and we've had the greatest opportunity in 2020 and people don't realize it. That's right. And these are the things we need to look at. So, Laura, thank you so much for coming. I hope you had fun. Thank you. Yeah, we're going to get there. So, so Jonathan, we're going we're gonna to kind of wrap up a few things. So, here's what we got going on. Um, Jonathan's book, if you guys are interested, connect with me on Facebook. Uh, we've got a Facebook group that we're really growing out called uh, Business Owners and uh, Executives Who Love to uh, Fish and Hunt. 
Uh, we're really pushing a lot of things out there. We're going to be doing a lot of fishing trips and all this fun stuff to bring people to, together. You know, our, our big thing is uh, we stole it from Maxwell again, becoming a real success. Uh, you know, John spelled it R-E-A-L as being the fisherman. R-E-E-L is all about relationships, equipping ethics and leadership. I think that's ethics, I think, is sometimes gone in business occasionally. And the more we bring that in, the better things get. And this is what we want to do. We want to bring the right thing and do the right thing no matter what. So, you know, we're going to be here through the holidays. Uh, we got a whole bunch of stuff going on. We got a couple cool guests coming on, and uh, you know we're looking forward to uh, you know talking to you guys. And check us out on the the new TV station. We'll be getting you that information out. Check us up on uh, Now Radio, um, Now Media Radio, and uh, the Now Media Radio TV station that's going to be coming. We got all this stuff coming in the next in 2020, and we want you guys to be following with us and uh, see the growth. So I think that's it, man. We done. All right, we're out of here. It's Mike Rager, your business guy. Laura, thank you very much again. Thank you for having me. All right, we're going to go uh, have some fun today. Later, guys. que deberá pagarse antes del día 20 de diciembre. Escúchalo bien, esto es equivalente a 15 días de salario por lo menos. Les recuerdo también que todos los trabajadores con nómina tienen derecho a recibir esta prestación, así que la fecha límite para recibir el aguinaldo es el sábado 19 de diciembre, es decir, este fin de semana. Y atención, porque si usted es patrón de una persona trabajadora del hogar, le recuerdo que por ley está obligado a pagarle el aguinaldo antes del 20 de diciembre. La razón es que la Ley Federal de Trabajo establece que todas las personas que realicen una labor personal subordinada tienen derecho a recibir el pago de esta prestación. Lo que significa que sin importar el tipo de contratación, todas las personas trabajadoras del hogar tienen derecho a recibir aguinaldo. Así que ya lo saben. Y si usted ya recibió su aguinaldo, la Confederación de Trabajadores de México le recomienda extremar las precauciones, por favor. Como bien sabemos, la época de sembrina está llena de celebraciones y lamentablemente los índices de delincuencia aumentan. Por ello es recomendable que si acude a un cajero a retirar su aguinaldo, 